the order. He then took up residence in Gotha, whose duke was an Illuminatus. The official story says that he abandoned all political activity and made his peace with the Catholic Church. Thereafter to lead a tranquil life, far removed from conspiracies. Such a luxurious and peaceful exile strikes as a suspiciously serene end for the leading conspirator of his time. It is reasonable to suppose that Weishaupt could have kept on working despite his low profile. And even if his retirement had been genuine, the order of the Illuminati already had a life of its own, as would soon be detected during the one episode that shook Western civilization the most and lay the groundwork for a true new world order, the French Revolution. During its heyday, the order of the Illuminati had extended its tentacles of influence to France. There it recruited, among others, Frederick the Dietrich, the mayor of Strasbourg, Mirabeau, the politician, and the Duke of Orleans, who recruited followers to the Parisian Freemasonry lodges. The strength of our order lies in its secrecy. It should never appear anywhere under its own name, but always shrouded in another name and another occupation. Adam Weishaupt. The connection between the Illuminati and the Jacobins during the French Revolution of 1789 was denounced by one of the order's most fervent detractors, Abbot Augustin Baruel. Likewise, the Scottish Freemason, author John Robinson, devoted a long and verbose chapter of his work to what he regarded as the Illuminati's influence on the revolution. Robinson maintained that Weishaupt and the Club of the Illuminati, together with the Club of the Jacobins, controlled the National Assembly. And from Paris, ruled all of France. One wonders if the Illuminati acted in good faith, seeking to free the French from royal oppression, or if the revolution was merely a convenient vehicle for its plans for creating a new world order, free from monarchy and religion, but under their control. Little more is known about the order since all the files related to it were conveniently destroyed during Allied bombing of German cities during the Second World War. Who were the Illuminati? Heroes fighting for liberty and reason, or demented tyrants who sought to enslave the world? The answer has as many facets as there are ways of interpreting history. And the truth is that time has not helped to solve the enigma. A short time before its apparent disbanding, the Order of the Illuminati had lodges in more than 25 European cities, from Munich to London, including Vienna, Paris, and Naples. Pretty soon its name became associated with other illustrious names and powerful clans and families that to this day decide the destiny of the world. Here is where the official history ends and the tracks of the Illuminati disappear. Adam Weishaupt died in 1830, apparently removed from any secret activity. But people noticed that the Illuminati plan for world domination coincided suspiciously with many of the events that apparently arose naturally by the will of the people. Princes and nations will disappear without violence from the earth. The human race will become one family and the world the abode of reasonable men. Adam Weishaupt. its apparent dissolution in 1790, the Order of the Illuminati boasted members in all the important European cities. The Catholic Church's attempt to root out and destroy the Order, and the political persecution of its most important leaders had precisely the opposite effect of what was intended. The Illuminati were scattered to the four winds, and in the shadows they moved like fish in water. 
Even after the apparent dismissal of the order, there were many who doubted that they had really ceased to operate. Their infiltration had been so widespread that every Freemason could now be suspected of being an undercover Illuminati. So the whole of Freemasonry was proscribed, and there was more to come. The order's reputation quickly spread to the New World, books by Abbot Agustin Burrell and John Robison alerting the world to the imminent Illuminati peril were published in the recently founded United States, generating panic among their readers. The paranoia had crossed the Atlantic. In 1776, the year in which Weishaupt founded his order and began to infiltrate Freemasonry, the United States declared its independence. Many of its founding fathers were Freemasons. It is not known if some of them were subsequently recruited by the Illuminati. What is known is that many American religious communities felt threatened by the freedom of worship guaranteed by the new constitution, which they denounced as part of an Illuminati conspiracy. In 1798, when the second president of the USA, John Adams, established May the 9th as a day of fasting and worship, to implore the heaven's mercy and blessing for the imperiled nation. Fingers were pointed at the order founded by Weishaupt, and a wave of panic flowed across New England. We should strive to do all we possibly can to endeavor the advance of the Illuminati in all important public positions. Adam Weishaupt In Boston, Reverend Jedediah Morse dedicated his sermons to the Illuminati threat. The media echoed his words, but no firm evidence of Illuminati conspiracy was ever uncovered. An immensely vast, rich and potentially powerful country where the practice of Freemasonry was widespread and accepted was certainly a fertile land in which to sow the Illuminati seed. Up to what point was the Illuminati Panic of New England exclusively based on absurd conspiracy theories promoted by zealous religious leaders? It was none other than Thomas Jefferson, who after reading Abbot Barrowell, came out in defense of Adam Weishaupt. In 1800, Jefferson wrote to his friend Madison, Adam Weishaupt believes in the indefinite perfectibility of man. He thinks he may in time be rendered so perfect that he will be able to govern himself in every circumstance so as to injure none and to do all the good he can to leave government no occasion to exercise their powers over him and of course to render political government useless this you know is not far removed from our own ideals Jefferson's main opponents the Federalist Party founded by Alexander Hamilton proclaimed that Jefferson as well as the Democratic Republican Party were all controlled by the Illuminati Nothing was ever proven. Jefferson's party is the forerunner of the Democrats and Republican parties that today take turns to govern the USA. The Illuminati paranoia faded out in the 19th century, but almost 100 years later, it was reborn, stronger than ever. In the early 20th century, English right-wing writer Nestor Webster stated without offering any proof that since 1786, a lodge of the Order of the Illuminati had become established in Virginia and 14 other American cities. According to her, this had given rise to a hidden theocracy of Jews, Kabbalists, Masons, Anarchists, Illuminati, Occultists and Heretics. With her ignorance and racism, Nestor Webster contributed to a renewal of interest in the order she manifestly abhorred and formally introduced anti-Semitism as an important element in conspiracy theorizing. Sadly, no conspiracy theory is worth its salt if it does not include the Jews in it. The writings of Nestor Webster may have stoked the flames, but the fact remains that long before that, and long after, theories of world domination have always included economic power, especially international banking, an activity that is often exclusively and mistakenly attributed to Jews. And the Illuminati conspiracy was no exception. Many authors of supposedly serious history books uphold the idea that international banking is in the hands of the Illuminati Jews 